Hey everybody, in my last video I showed you how to build a real QRD diffuser for just 9 euro. That video got a ton of feedback and some of you asked if I could show how to build a 1D diffuser and that's exactly what we're going to do today. This build is a little bit heavier, it cost me 34 euro and 50 cent to build, but store-bought diffusers of this size go for 215 upwards and they often are shallower and random pattern instead of a real QRD diffuser. In this video I'm going to take you step by step through the complete build and I'm also going to show you how to build it with more inexpensive hand tools. So no matter what setup you have, you can make one of these. Along the way I'll also cover some important theory, for example the difference between 1D and 2D designs, why prime numbers matter and how absorption and diffusion interact. Oh, and at the end of the video I'll also put all the dimensions on the screen so that you can take a screenshot for your own build. Just so you know, this channel is not all about DIY. This is a little mini-series about acoustics, but I mainly share production and mixing techniques. So if that's your thing, you're in the right place. Now before we start cutting any wood, let me show you the main pieces of this diffuser. You've got the fins, the well bottoms that set the depths and the top and bottom pieces. First of all, I would recommend that you buy all your parts pre-cut at your hardware store. They will usually do this at no extra cost, so the advantages are the pieces are really straight, you only pay the square meters that you actually need and you don't need a table saw at home. Now to the grooves. I start with the fins, cutting the slots that hold the well bottoms. This router table is DIY, it's basically just a handheld router mounted under a board with a proper fence and miter gauge. The grooves only need to be around 3 mm deep, that's plenty, and I go slightly over 3 mm so that the well bottoms later slide in perfectly without jamming. And I always check the depth of cut regularly, routers can lose their setting and you end up with a too deep cut. I cut all the matching grooves in one go so that they match perfectly later. That way I only set up the router once for each depth of cut and each fin will be very consistent later. And before cutting I marked all the positions of the grooves on the fins so I couldn't mess up the cutting. I also used feather boards for consistency and safety. You can buy them or you can make them yourselves by just taking a piece of wood and cutting angled slots into them. Once the grooves are cut you can see from the top that all the grooves perfectly line up. If you don't have a router table you can use a handheld router. The one I use here costs only 119 euro including battery. You can just clamp a fin as a guide and ride the router along it. With pre-cut parts from the store you'll know they're perfectly straight. So one fin makes a perfect guide for the others and don't forget to put on some dust extraction. A simple vacuum cleaner will do and also wear a dust mask because those MDF dust particles are not really nice to breathe in. So here's the key difference between a 1D and a 2D diffuser. A 1D diffuser only spreads on one plane, so this one only spreads on the horizontal plane. If I would flip it by 90 degrees it would spread up and down, while as a 2D diffuser, as the name suggests, diffuses in two directions. In this direction and in this direction. That's why often you see 2D diffusers on ceilings where they spread the sound into the whole room in every direction. While as 1D diffusers are often a good choice for walls, especially in this orientation where they don't scatter energy back to the floor where you may not want it. I'll talk a little bit more about placement later on. There is one more difference between these two builds. To reach the same low frequency range you need to build a 2D diffuser much deeper than a 1D diffuser. That's why this design is very practical to reach low frequencies. Speaking of low frequencies, 
The giant diffuser you can see in the back here is 40 centimeters deep and it's reaching down to 442 Hz. That was a frequency that I needed to control in this room and it worked perfectly. The big diffuser is built in six individual parts with half thickness fins where they meet, so they lock together like one continuous diffuser. And by the way, this big diffuser is based on the prime number 43, so it's not just like six times the same diffuser, but it's a large sequence allowing for a lot of different frequencies to be actually diffused. Sometimes you hear that diffusers don't work if you are close to them. And that's true. If you sit too close, you'll hear comb filtering instead of smooth diffusion. A common shortcut says that you need at least three times the build depth in distance from the diffuser for it to work properly. But the actual distance really depends on the design. And an app like QR Dude that I use for this just recommends you the minimum seating distance from the diffuser for it to work properly. For example, this diffuser is 13 centimeters deep and the recommended minimal distance from it is 94 centimeters. So it will work perfectly fine even in smaller rooms. Next, I cut the grooves into the top and bottom parts. These receive the fins so that everything interlocks later. The first and the last fin are also recessed into the top and bottom so that assembly is going to be much easier later. The grooves in the top and bottom pieces are all spaced 35 mm apart, exactly the width of the well bottoms. I cut these grooves on the router table using a mitre gauge to get square cuts and the fence to get the right spacing. Again, if you don't have a router table, no problem. The same method as with grooving the fins works fine here. I also just cut them 3 mm deep and that's plenty to keep the fins tightly seated in the top and bottom parts. Now for the well bottoms. I cut strips on the table saw. Each strip is the well width plus 3 mm on each side so they'll sit snugly in the grooves. The well bottoms, they are only seated in the fins and not in the top and bottom parts, so they need to be cut a little bit shorter. But I'll add all the dimensions in the description later. If you don't have a table saw, no problem. You can cut straight strips of plywood with a handsaw. Plywood is actually easier on the saw than MDF. This is the exact saw I bought for 50 euros and it works perfectly. Here are the strips for the well bottoms all cut and ready. And here are the top and bottom pieces with their grooves. And of course the fins we cut earlier. With all these parts prepared, we are ready for assembly. Real diffusion is based on math and specifically on prime numbers. This 9 euro diffuser is based on the prime number 7. And this 1D diffuser is based on the prime number 11. The higher the prime number, the larger the sequence and the more actual real diffusion frequencies you've got. A random pattern or even a bookshelf as some viewers suggested just give you irregular reflections and not actual diffusion. A real QRD sequence on the other hand gives you predictable, calculated, science proven diffusion across its design frequency range. And that's why you see them in professional recording studios. It's not just for the looks, but they measure differently. A real QRD diffuser actually spreads sound predictably in time and space, while a random pattern doesn't. I start by loosely clamping the top and the two sides together, just to hold things in position while I glue the bottom. I add glue to the side fins, Place the bottom panel and secure it with masking tape. Most tapes have a little bit of stretch and the holding power that you get this way is plenty for this kind of glue up. I 
I used quick drying wood glue but any white glue will do. Just let it sit until the glue cures. Next I flip this part of the frame upside down so that the glue part is on the bottom. And then I insert all the fins into the bottom grooves. It's a pretty tight fit so nothing moves out of place. And next I slide all the well bottoms in the channels cut into the fins. Finally I add a little bit of glue. Place the top. And hold it in place with strips of masking tape again. If you wonder why there were some holes on the top, I first thought it would be a good idea to screw these parts together, but even with pre-drilling, the MDF tended to split, so I thought glue is plenty and with the tape, everything holds together until the glue cures. If you have large clamps, you can clamp the whole diffuser while the glue dries, but honestly, the tape alone works fine. As a last step, I add a back panel for rigidity and to keep everything square. I sand the edges of a 3mm MDF sheet to roughen it a little bit, spread a bit of glue, and then staple it to the back. Small nails would work as well, but just keep them thin enough so that they don't split the MDF. And that's it, the diffuser is done and ready. Absorbers and diffusers do very different jobs. Absorbers remove sound energy. In fact, they dissipate sound waves into heat. They take out the highs first if they are thin, and the thicker they get, the lower they reach in frequency. Up to real bass traps that go pretty low in frequency. Treating really low frequencies will be the topic of a future video. But for now, let's say that absorbers are responsible for controlling the reverberation time of a room and also taking care of an even frequency response in a room. But if you overdo it, then your room becomes very, very dead and pretty lifeless. And that's where diffusion comes into play. Diffusers are designed to scatter energy in time and space and not remove energy from the room. That's why they keep a room sounding natural, smoother and even bigger. Usually when treating a room you don't start with diffusion. You would probably start with absorption, building bass traps, building broadband absorption until your frequency response is even in the room, until your reverberation time is the way you want it or need it in your room. And then diffusion comes into play. If after installing your absorption you still have some bare walls left, you can decide if you want to smooth those reflections out by placing diffusers. So instead of getting hard, harsh, unpleasant reflections from bare walls, you get a smoother, softer, scattered sound. One practical tip about placing diffusion is that if you have a larger surface of diffusion, you just get more effect out of it than just having one. You can, for example, take three, four, five of these and just place them in a row. Just one little thing to keep in mind, if you place many of these next to each other, you should add an inverted version of this diffuser as every fourth in a row, just to keep the scattering even. 
Or what you can do is you build one giant diffuser the way I did back in my room here based on a much higher prime number. You get more diffusion frequencies and you don't need to build it in one big chunk. You can split it up in smaller parts, build them individually and just place them next to next. Et voila, you get a really big diffuser diffusing many different frequencies. And really if you plan to build your own diffusers and not just copy the one I made today, you can use the app QR Dude. I'll link to it in the description below. It will calculate everything for you. The depth, the width, the frequencies that are diffused, and it even gives you a cut list of everything. So this is how I built this 1D diffuser for 34 euro and 50 cent. And once you got the dimensions, it's pretty easy to build, especially if you have the parts pre-cut at the store. You will find all the dimensions in the description below, but you can also pause the video now and take a couple screenshots to get some details of the build. By the way, the total costs of the hand tools plus the materials are still less than one store-bought random pattern diffuser. If you found this video useful, leave me a like and a little comment. I enjoy reading and replying to all of them. And if you want more mixing and recording techniques, that's what I mainly do on this channel. Subscribe so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Take care, bye bye.